Hi, in this video I'm going to do the calculation for the standard deviation using this information. We've already in a previous video calculated the mean. So if you notice here in our formula, standard deviation is represented by the lower sigma. I break this formula up into two parts, the left and the right side of the minus sign. The top numerator, sum of fx squared over the sum of f, is different to the sum of fx over the sum of f to be squared. But we've already seen this right side. If you notice in our previous video, that sum of fx over the sum of f is actually the mean, the sum of fx over the sum of f. So we've already found that as 34.5. So I'm just going to copy what we found here. Just to give us a head start. There's no point repeating it. So I'm going to tackle the left side, the sum of fx squared. I recommend usually work backwards when you're dealing with a formula. So this is not fx squared, as in this column fx squared. This actually indicates to us that we should square your x first and then multiply it by f. So x squared in Excel is represented by this x to the power of 2. So equals open your bracket, identify your midpoint x, power of 2, 25. And again, we just click on the cell and grab the corner, drag it down, and we get x squared for each value of x. Again, sticking with the numerator, we need to multiply that x squared by f. So again, I break my formula down into headings on my table, fx squared. Remember, this is my frequency. This is my x value. We explained that in the previous video. So open equals open my bracket f multiply by x squared. Close my bracket and return. So 4 by 25 is my 100. Highlight the cell, grab the corner, and drag it down to get the rest of our numbers. So now we have fx squared for each of these ranges of values. So finally, on this top part of my formula, we need to sum up fx squared. So equals sum, open my bracket, click on the first cell, colon, last cell, that highlights all numbers needed, and press return. So 166800. Again, going back to the formula, we need to divide that by the sum of f. So we know the sum of f from the previous video when we calculated the mean is 128. So if we sum those up, we'll get the 128. Okay, to calculate the standard deviation, I'm just going to break it up into two parts, the left side of the minus and the right side of the minus. And then I'll deal with the square root. Equals open my bracket, sum of fx squared, divided by the sum of f, close my bracket, the right side is my mean squared. So you could put in the 34.5 that we got in the last video, or in my case, I'm just going to do the calculation. Equals up my bracket, sum of fx divided by the sum of f. Make sure you square that. 1192. Subtract one from the other, which is part of the formula, but I'm going to complete it at this point. Equal square root, open my bracket, 1303 minus the 1192. Close my bracket, and there we have 10.5. So that's your standard deviation. The standard deviation is typically a fraction of the mean, and we got 35 for the mean. And here's a tip a normal distribution, which typically takes account of all data in a data set is usually broken up into three parts either side of the mean. So when the mean is 35 in this example, breaking that up into three parts is approximately 11. So here we have a standard deviation of 11. So the three parts that the normal distribution is broken up into on both sides of the means are known as standard deviations. Thanks for watching. Again, why not check out my other videos. In my next video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the median. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the image below, the Economic Rockstar image. Thanks again for watching.